Welcome to the Shikama Live Show with your host, Shikama. Be sure to click the thumbs up or thumbs down button, doesn't matter. Asia leads in the industrial robot adoption. Why does Europe and the U.S. lag behind? This is from Brinks News. Robots are key tools for boosting productivity and living standards. To date, most robot adoption has occurred in manufacturing, where robots are designed to perform a wide variety of manual tasks more efficiently and consistent than humans. But, with continued innovation, robots use is spreading to many other sectors, from agriculture to logistics and hospitality. As a result, companies around the world are adopting robots. According to the International Federation of Robotics, the global average for industrial robots per 10,000 manufacturing workers grew from 66 robots in 2015 to 85 in 2017. Korea is the world's largest adopter with 710 robots per 10,000 workers. The United States sits at 7th with 200 robots per 10,000 workers. The West will have to overcome its irrational fear of automation if it hopes to boost its productivity and competitiveness. Asia leads the West lags behind. We would expect high-wage nations to have more robots because the decision to install and run a robot is often based on the cost savings that can be achieved with a robot can perform a task instead of a human worker. By controlling a manufacturing wages, it is possible to calculate the share of robot in each country based on comp compensation levels. For example, in Korea, annual compensation was $45,960, making the payback period for installing a robot 15 months. As a result, Korea's actual rate of robot adoption, 710 per 10,000 workers, remember, was 2.4 times higher than its expected adoption rate when controlling for wage levels. Comparing the ranking of expected robot adoption rates to actual rates, several patterns emerge. The first is that, on a wage-adjusted basis, East Asian nations lead the world in robot adoption, occupying six of the top seven positions in the rankings. Korea leads with Singapore, China, Thailand, and Taiwan following in that order. Overall, Europe is lagging, with only two countries adopting at a higher than expected rate given wages levels. Slovenia and the Czech Republic. The United States given its higher wages level, is significantly behind, ranking 16th, with the adoption rates 49% below expected. What roles does national commitment play? Many of the leading nations have established national goals and strategies to support robotics and innovation and robot adoption, including proactive tax incentives for investing in robots. In Congress, in contrast, the United States lacks a national robotic strategy. To the extent that the United States supports robot development through the National Foundation the National Robotics Initiative, it does so with minuscule funding levels. And it focuses only on robots that complement workers, not automate jobs, even though the latter are much more critical to driving productivity. Let me explain what is really going on in the United States. The United States will actually compensate employers for workers' salaries. Did you know this? So, the minimum wage worker actually makes $15 an hour already through tax incentives and, and what have you with the federal government and state government and city government and county government. So, the $15 an hour push is wrong-headed because you're already making $15 an hour. You're just not seeing the $15 an hour. It costs the employer $15 an hour to pay 
for a worker who makes minimum wage. But people don't understand. You can't explain this to people. And so what is really going on with the $15 an hour push? The $15 an hour push is for employers. But people don't get this. And when people say, if you raise it to $15 an hour, we're going to have to fire half or 60% or 70% of workers or even shut down some businesses. What does it mean when a business shuts down? That actually means that competition is tightening. So the government, by raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour, can now shut down your competitor because he can't hack raising your wages to $15 an hour. And guess what? The real solution for everybody is if they adopted more robots. Do you understand then that you could fire 70% of your staff, install robots into your business, and stay open for business. But that's not the solution. The solution is to try and raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour to then have the government squeeze out your competition. That's what's really going on in the United States. Culture may also play a role. As many of the leading nations have distinct, distinctively positive views of robots, ergo Japan has an annual robot award, with the dominant narrative in the United States is that robots are unsafe job killers. China appears to be in a class of its own, with its national and provincial government committing massive amounts of money to subsidizing adoption of robots and other automation technology. China's robotics industry development plan set a goal for expanding robot use tenfold by 2025. As a result, many provincial governments are providing generous subsidies for firms to buy robots. If China and South Korea respectively growth rates continue at the same pace they achieved from 2016 to 2017, then by 2026, China will overtake Korea as the nation with the highest number of industrial robots as a share of its industrial workforce. China number one in the world. Fear of an automated future. What, what about jobs? Don't robots eliminate them? To be sure, the emergence of the next production re revolution, which will include better and cheaper robots, will increase both productivity and labor market churning. As more workers are likely to lose their jobs due to technological displacement, but claims of mass unemployment can be dismissed out of hand. That means it is, it's not a lie. It's just really wrong headed to say you are going to lose your job to a robot. That's not what's going to happen. Uh, jobs are now going to be adjusted because of robots. I want to ask you a question. Do you, Eve, can you imagine a world where a human being sits on an assembly line and makes a plastic bottle. I was watching the, I was watching the video the other day of how it's made and it had plastic bottle. These are how plastic bottles are made. And of course there is no human around. The plastic bottle is on an assembly line. It, the Little top is made, the little screw top is made, and the rest is a bunch of plastic underneath. They warm it up a little bit, and then they blow air into it, into a mold. And voila, out comes a plastic bottle, which then is cooled down, put a cap on it, boom, you're done. Can you even imagine a human being even doing that? And the answer is no. How long would that take? for a human being to do that. It would probably take all day for a human being to make one plastic bottle. Oh, I think you think that you think that's a, a crazy thing. You see on YouTube, people trying to make stuff uh, in forges, with forges, homemade forges. 
They create the mold. They shape the mold. That takes hours. Th- then they heat up and uh, do all this stuff to the metal. This is metal we're talking about. Then they pour the metal into the mold. This is, this is, more hours have been spent doing this. Then they cool off the <laughs> the uh, mold or the stuff in the mold. More hours. Or even, it, it might even take a day for it to cool off, depending on how they do it. Then they break the mold and break out the product that has been molded with the metal. And then they chisel and do all this. That's another day. That's all to make one item. And a robot can do it in milliseconds. Milliseconds. They can churn out hundreds in a minute. Can you even imagine a human being trying to do all that? But what what happens? People actually work more. More people have jobs because of it. Why? Because then you have to do all of the overs- oversight and some of the robots actually have to be guided. They're not all automatic. And you use the robots as actual tools to actually do the job. When companies use technology to cut costs, competition forces them to pass a significant share of those savings to consumers in the form of lower prices. The remainder are going to workers in the form of higher wages and to shareholders in the form of greater returns on investment. This added purchasing power is not buried. It is spent, and that spending demand creates new jobs. This job creation dynamic is the same whether productivity grows at 1% a year or 10%. Moreover, there is a clear evidence that there is a positive correlation between robot density and manufacturing output. In other words, having more robots helps economy manufacturing sectors gain global market share. Because of this gain in output, the correlation between robot use and manufacturing as a share of employment is negative, but only slightly. If the United States wants to boost their productivity and competitiveness, One of the most important things the federal government can do is implement policies that spur faster, deeper, and wider adoption of robots, not just in manufacturing, but across the economy. But there's ulterior motives in the stopping of robots. They don't want people to work. They don't want people to have jobs. Creating more demand and more productivity, which is what a robot does, since it can now automate a system to 10 times what a human being can do, or even 50 times or even 100 times to what a human being can do, means that they would not have to uh, say that they need more workers. Why on earth would you have a country say it needs more workers when the country actually produces the best robots in the world? The answer, of course, is that they're not putting the robots to good use. They're selling the robots to places like China. We are creating our own competitors by selling our robots to China and not actually using our robots ourselves. This has been your tech news for the day. I hope that you'll take this to heart and understand what is actually going on. And this is something that you should probably be asking the federal government. Why are you subsidizing uh, Tyrone going to work, but you're not subsidizing the robot, 10 robots to actually work? And they're talking about taxing robots. That would actually stop robot implementation, which means that we can't produce 10 times more goods or produce 10 times more shoes or produce 10 times more handbags or produce 10 times more gold bars or diamond rings or whatever that's what that means that which means then that the cost of all of that stuff comes crashing down and that's a good thing because then that spurs the economy to buy more stuff because more people can now buy stuff that wasn't available to them last year That's what this all means. But the government instead actually subsidizes 
Bukwisha and uh, La Chandelay to go work at Walmart or wherever. And then you have all of these, all of these arguments about labor and minimum wage would vanish. A working wage would vanish. Understand, Korea implemented the most robots in the world. Their workers make the most money in the world. Korea. They're not the United States. They don't even have the, con the economy of the United States. But their workers are really expensive. Thank you all for watching. Uh, please help support the channel by donating to PayPal or Patreon.com slash Shikama or PayPal.me slash Shikama. Um, leave a comment. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you all.